hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel in this simple video we are going to be creating a very simple qr code generator so there is this simple library by david sim david sim so that's the official website you can easily within some few lines of code generate a qr code where somebody can scan and download a certain app visit a certain website watch a video stuff like that so what you have to do just visit this url i'm going to be linking it in the description below and you'll be landing on this page just click on this zip like folder and download the zip file so this is what you'll be having they will give you a file looking like this and make sure you extract it and for me after extracting it i named it qr code so it will be having all this stuff inside so you can either use this raw file qr code.js or use the minified version very very simple this is my simple html as you saw it here in the browser i just have an input url and then this so let me first remove this autocomplete future from this autocomplete set it to off so i don't want the user to be seeing the previous urls the user entered when they focus in this input field let me take you through the html as you can see here we have our simple parent container with a class of qrl container the div where we are going to be rendering our qrl code then a form with the id of qrl form having this input field we are going to be inputting the url and the submit button where the user will be clicking to generate a new qrl code so this is going to be very very simple so if you are done just make sure you link this file to your page as you can see here in my script tag in the source attribute i specified the folder where that file is qrl code forward slash then i linked this file so qr code.mini.js so you can use the minified version or the raw version then let me create a custom file here and i'm going to call it app you can call it anything you want or generator.js anything so i'm going to call it app.js then after that i'm going to be linking it here script and in the source attribute since they're in the same directory with the html file i'm just going to write app sorry app.js very very simple let me put these two side by side so this app.js let it be this side and re remove it here so i want us to go step by step so what i'm going to do here i'm going to first get hold of these two elements so the div first we are going to get the access to this element with the id of race div so i'm going to come here and create a variable and i'm say const and i'm going to call it curl div so this is user defined you can call it anything you want i say document document dot query selector and we are going to select this id so race div short for result div that's where we are going to be displaying our result and remember here to put the pound symbol or the hash symbol since we are using query selector then we are going to get access to that form which is having an id of qr form qr r <laughs> i twist my tongue let's get access to that and i'm going to call it my form so these are user defined you can call them anything you want but here you say document dot query selector query selector and get access to that d to that id which is hash the qr form very very simple so what we are going to do is listen for a submit event on that form so when when the user submits it or clicks on this submit button to prevent that default behavior of the web like the page reloading the entire page so we are going to say my form that's the variable we created up there i'm saying dot add event listener and the event that we are going to listen to is called a submit event so submit and then here we are going to pass in the e parameter i'm going to use some arrow functions here 
you forgive me for the noise in the background if you hear it then we are going to say e the prevent like the event parameter e dot prevent default and this will prevent the default behavior of a web page reloading then let us get access to the url so what the user is going to be inputting in this input field so we can say const and call it url obvious and we say document document dot query selector and we are going to be selecting the element with the id of url link so hash url link very very simple but we want the value what the user has entered in we said dot value very very simple let me extend this somehow we fit on one line oh even i made a mistake here dot value so let us get access also i guess this is enough for right now we are going to be adding some more features but let us first handle this so what we are going to do is check if that is empty if url is equal to empty then we are going to throw out some alert so alert and we say what can we tell the user please enter like your value so you are like telling some someone to enter something else if at all it's not empty then what we are going to do is now initiate this curl object or class so we are going to select we are going to create a variable the curl code and we assign it to new so we are initiating it we say curl code so this Three are in capital letter, and then here we are going to pass in the variable that we want to work on. Remember, it's this. This way we are going to be rendering our curl code, and we assigned it this variable. So we pass in that element that we are going to be applying the curl code in. Open these curly brackets. So these are the options that we are going to be passing in. So text. This is going to be the URL. That they are going to be like rendering into the QRL comma. Then you can even add some size stuff like that. But let us try this. Let's go and say copy link address. So go back to our program, paste the link, and then click on generate QR code very very simple guys as you can see they have generated this requirement code as you can see when the title or the tooltip shows that url so when you scan right now on your device you'll be taken to that specific video and watch it so it can be an app anything so let us add some extra features so by default they give you their custom size so this is the predefined size of what they will be putting out but you can even add some parameters where you can generate a specific size of the qr code so let us first go back to our html so after this let us add some option or select tag sorry select tag and we can just give it an id and i'm going to call it size and below here we are going to be having options so the value, the first value is going to be 100. And what the user will be seeing, it's 100 by 100. So let me copy this on different lines. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can go to any size that you want. 2, 3, 4. This is going to be 5. So even here, what the user will be seeing make sure you put the corresponding number so right there so we have a, an id on this element so let us go back in our javascript and get access to that element so he, below here we are going to say const and say qrl size so that's the variable that i have defined it's a user defined you can call it anything you want and we get access to that element having the id of size hash size then we want the value so remember we are having this 
attribute of value so it's having the number that we want so here we shall say dot value so we want to get that value of whatever the user will be selecting so here once we have access to that element so as i told you here you can pass in a lot of options so comma and we are going to be having the width and we are going to set it to qrl size and then comma then the height and we are also going to set it to the qrl size very very simple so whatever the user will be selecting here they will be having it in the width and height remember they are specific values 100 by 100 200 by 200 so here it will be when they select 200 so it will be 200 by 200 when they select 400 so it will be 400 by 400 let us save this and go back in our browser so we have this simple drop down select menu let us go back copy the link address of this video paste it here generate and now we have some problem see when i try to switch to another number or size and click generate we are going to be creating another qrl code so what we want to do is first clear every time we click on this generate qrl button we need to clear that area or element that is having this qrl code so this is very very simple just come here after preventing the default behavior of the page and we want to clear everything that will be in this every time we click that button so we say qrl div dot inner html inner html and we want to set it to nothing or empty so every time we click it we want it to be having a different value or element so let me paste again oh <laughs> let me copy a link here come here paste get 300 generate and that will be the size so when we say 400 generate and we're having 400 500 generate and they're giving you that so it's very very simple guys make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video and i'll be seeing you in the next tutorials peace